Welcome to the Citrix Analytics video series. My name is Gunnar Berger and I work in the CTO office here at Citrix and I'm here to share with you what to expect in your first 24 hours of using Citrix Analytics. And to begin that conversation, let's first start talking about Citrix Cloud. I'm going to start by drawing a cloud up here. Now if you're not already aware, Citrix Cloud is all the various software we build at Citrix built as a service. So maybe you're using virtual apps and desktops or content collaboration, or maybe you're using UEM. We have many more services built inside of Citrix Cloud, but for now, that's a good start. Now, all of these services have already been built to work with Citrix Analytics in, they, in that they send data to our service. Now, officially, all of these work inside of Citrix Cloud, but for the ease of understanding and drawing, I'm drawing them outside of the cloud. Setting up Citrix Analytics is pretty simple. All you have to do is go into settings, click on data sources, then click on turn on data processing for each of the services you want to enable it for. So as our next step, let's take a look at the type of event data that Citrix Analytics is receiving. The first and most common type of events sent to Citrix Analytics is information events. Now these are events that have been collected by our various products for many years. A common example would be Gunner launched Microsoft Office at 7.45 a.m. from Santa Clara. This is a pretty common type of event uh, that's being collected from these various services. But now it's being funneled into Citrix Analytics to be used at a later time. The second type of event captured by Citrix Analytics are rule violation events. These are rules created from the underlying products set by you, the administrator. So a good example of this would be UEM. Uh, a common rule is to not allow jailbroken devices onto the network. So if I were trying to access my company from a jailbroken device, I would be in violation of a UEM policy that has been set. Now, instead of just leaving that violation in UEM, UEM is now passing the information into Citrix Analytics, which Citrix Analytics is going to use to increase the risk profile. When the event is sent from the underlying product into Citrix Analytics, Citrix Analytics has to first determine if they've seen that user before. It's able to do this because it has a really big memory or a database. And inside the database is where Citrix Analytics is capturing all of the user profiles. So let's use me as an example here for a second. Let's say it's the first time that I've been using the system since Citrix Analytics has been enabled. Uh, that means Citrix Analytics has to first create a profile for me. So it creates, it, it creates a profile of me. And now I've logged in for the first time, so it creates its first record. Now every time I do something, say I log in from Starbucks, I log in from my iPhone, um, I, I log off, I violate a policy. Anything that I'm doing from any of these various services are now being tracked inside of the database, uh, or being tracked inside of my profile, which is inside the database. And over time, Citrix Analytics is going to create a fingerprint of what it looks like to be me. The reason I'm focused on rule violations in the first 24 hours of using Citrix Analytics is that machine learning is not used during this process. A, a rule has been violated. Something bad happened. I don't need a thousand CPUs with uh, petabytes of data processing to determine that this is bad and we should do something about it. So we're immediately going to see all of that stuff in the first 24 hours. And how we see that is through risk indicators. When a rule is violated, Citrix Analytics immediately increases the risk score for that user and presents it on the user risk timeline as a risk indicator, as you can see here. Everything you see in the user risk timeline is a mix of rule violations and our machine learning algorithm displaying potential areas of concerns as risk indicators. So Citrix Analytics puts a spotlight on these risks in your environment. But it's up to you as the administrator to determine what to do about those risks. This is where the human element comes back in. Now there is no direct connection between the risk indicator or actions until the admin sets it. So let's talk about how you set up these actions. What you need to do is you need to go create a new, new rule, which you do by going to settings, rules, create new rules. Here you can see all sorts of different criteria and choose the course of action to take. Maybe after a failed login attempt, you want to notify the user or the admin. Maybe it's a good idea to start recording the session. Or heck, you're such a super secure environment, you determine to lock it all down after a few failed login attempts. That's your call. We give you the tools. It's up to you to determine how to use them. And on that note, go for it. Go in there and mess around with the rules, set up criteria, and do some actions. I'd recommend just notifying you as the admin to start, though. It's pretty safe. But there's a couple things I want you to know. 
In that rule selection screen, I want you to take notice of a couple key words. Words like excessive, unusual, suspected, and potential. These are all based on our machine learning algorithm. So in the first 24 hours, if you try to use these rules, you're not gonna see any responses. This is expected behavior, because it takes a little bit more time for the machine learning algorithm to create the blueprint to, for those rules to come into effect. So make sure to stay tuned to our next video on machine learning to learn more about how these rules apply and how machine learning works. And on that note, I hope you enjoy using Citrix Analytics. I hope this video was helpful. And uh, if you have any questions or just wanna make some comments, please do so below. Have a great day.